Keith Hills is pretty sore. He's got a hip pointer. Um, he, he got hit a couple of times early uh, and was, was very sore. Uh, we got uh, CJ Stander, we think has a facial injury. He's gone for a scan. Um, Dev Toner with an ankle. Um, he just taking that kick off toward the end of the game. Uh, looks like he's rolled his ankle, um, which is, has been a bit problematic for him recently. So um, the other guys, I think, are just bumps and bruises, but but there's um, physical and, uh, and emotional bruises there for sure. Was it a bit, um, just see the five minutes at the end when Slade got a second try there, just a lot of fans turning to leave and walk out five minutes ago. Is that a bit strange going to be here? Considering we're all back here in November and we beat the All Blacks, and that atmosphere was unbelievable. Is it strange going to see fans not sticking with the side until the very end? Yeah, that would be unusual. I didn't really notice it. Um, it wasn't the full focus of my attention at the time. It was massively disappointing that we, we gave up that try to, to, to Slade. And, and I thought the daily try as well was, was one that was disappointing because in a, in a game of fine margins to offer up those tries, it, it is frustrating. But, um, you know, I, I, can, I can understand the frustration of fans. And at that stage, the game was gone. We weren't going to get back and win it. The contrast is in the All Black game, we were in front and we had every chance of winning it and, and managed to. Joe, can you give us your assessment of why Ireland were, were so um, badly outplayed today? Um, I, I think we were physically bettered. Uh, I, I don't think I've seen a, a game where we've played where our opponents have got so many physical uh, dominant tackles, where our opponents have, have carried physically um, in the manner that they did. And it wasn't a surprise to us. We knew with the side that was picked, we knew that the, the power that they, they bring to the game and, and I'd labelled some guys last Wednesday. Um, but, to, but to contain those guys is difficult. Our ball was slow. Uh, it was something that they'd talked about, slow our ball down, and it gives them an opportunity to take pot shots and, and they took those shots well. So uh, when that happens, you're kind of forced to go to the air because it's the only way you can progress. And when that happens, we couldn't really get into the aerial battle. There was a lot of white jerseys in front of any aerial contest. And maybe we we're a little bit too honest there. They got great access into the aerial contest going the other way. And, and um, you know, it, it got quite physical, obviously, with Keith Eels. I, I, I don't think that was necessarily part of a plan, but it certainly put Keith out of the game. Um, and he was our most experienced back three player in, in the context of the game. So it, it then um, you know, was, was pretty challenging to cover that space in behind and I thought they played to it really, really well. Rory, how much of a wake-up call is this for Ireland in a World Cup year? Um, I think it's... I don't necessarily think it's a wake-up call. You know, we always talk about trying to continually improve and I think we were under no illusions how good England were. I think the, the disappointing thing for us is the way we started. And when you play internationals away from home especially you want to get a foothold in the game early we let England get that and then we couldn't we didn't ever get back off onto the front foot and I think whenever that's happened to you it is really, really difficult so I don't think we we necessarily need wake-up calls to want to improve we, we look at this and, and we look at the ways that we can get better and we have to get better but look we prepared well and we prepared to go out and win a game and, and we'll have to look now this week as to how we can make sure that whatever happened in the preparation with all our detail, we just didn't get the physical aids that we're used to bringing. Joe, um, do you feel that England targeted Robbie Henshaw and how do you think he did playing at 15? Yeah, I thought Robbie did a pretty good job. Um, you know, Keith for 20 minutes was keen to, to run off the hip pointer. You can't really run those off. So he was a little bit um, under kind of under pressure to get to cover the space and, and take responsibility for his for his side of the of the pitch. So Robbie had the double job almost at times, and I thought he, he, he the volume of running he did, uh, I, I thought he was as good as he could have been. Um, I, I don't think necessarily they targeted him. Um, they extended the end goals last year because they wanted to to target that little bit of space behind. So they they did that again. We knew they were going to do that. Um, you just need fully fit ideally experienced guys who, who can cover that space really effectively. One of, the, one of the things that does make it difficult is when 
in the front line, you're under pressure. And they, uh, they really did put us under pressure with a lot of uh, players running in front of the ball or, or players running incredibly hard onto the ball. And it, it was very difficult to contain their forward momentum. You mentioned uh, England physically uh, <coughs> playing at Muslim <coughs> times. How do you rectify something like that? Yeah, I think it's something that happened two years two years ago to us uh, against the All Blacks. I think we got we got bullied here, and I, I think you've you've got to be prepared to to give as good as you get. And I don't think we did tonight. Um, you know, I know that the players are disappointed that that we didn't probably uh, have quite the same physical edge that they did. Now. You know, we don't have the same personalities as well, so we've got to make sure that our, our solutions are uh, that we get better pressure on the ball. I don't think we got a turnover on the ground tonight. Uh, th there was very little that was allowed to happen on the ground anyway. There was a lot of people off their feet. So it, it turned into that, that muddy sort of battle that, uh, that is very difficult to contest in. And then on the back of that, if that's slow, uh, it's very hard for us to get on the front foot and, and it allowed them to get off the line and, and I think physically when you're getting off the line defensively and you've got guys either side of you and, you, and you're bringing a real physical intent, uh, they got excited about it. I, you know, there was quite a lot of volume um, with them uh, kind of stirring each other up and, and getting each other off the line and uh, then they backed that up with a real a real physical intent. So, so Joe, if, they, if the referees gave you more access to your ball and the blockers were penalised, would it have been a different game, a different result? I, I'm not saying that at all. We've, we've got to come up with solutions for that. I, I, I would have probably anticipated a lot of that happening. Uh, we'd seen uh, ha how they go about their business. That, they'd been pretty open about how they were going to approach the game. And it, it is very difficult when they, uh, they get what they're looking for to then change things. And uh, when, when we can't attack through carrying because the ball is slow and they're getting off the line at us, you've got to be able to find that space behind. You've got to be able to go after them in the air. And, and we couldn't get access there either. So it, it, was, it was difficult. And I think the penalty count, we would have had double the penalties, but um, on the back of that, you've got to be able to capitalise on those. And we couldn't, we couldn't then um, get enough of our game going. I, I, I am frustrated that we do tend to start slow. It, 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 and we can't afford to. Looking further ahead and, and into the World Cup, we've got to hit the ground running. You know, in November, Argentina wasn't great, but we stepped it up the following week. Even last year in the Six Nations, I don't think we were great against France and we built our way into the competition and finished it off really strongly. We've tended to finish Six Nations off pretty strongly, even going back to you know, um, the, the Six Nations that we've won, you know, winning in France or winning in Scotland to win the early ones and obviously winning in England last year. But we've got to be able to start better right from the start. Look, I, I'm not going to get into any any discussions about that. I'm going to go through the, the normal channels and, and I, I'm just going to ask for some clarification on, on, on some of the incidents that we saw. And once I get that, we'll have a better, clearer picture. We'll have a better expectation of, of what referees are actually going to deliver in terms of player safety and then, then we can springboard from there. What would you do, Rory, on that? Yeah, look, it's the same as Joe. You know, we we just we asked uh, Jerome just for for clarification, not just about that challenge, just about that there'd been there'd been a couple of them. Um, but yeah, look, we'll go through the appropriate channels. But look, I think it, it was important that that we highlighted that from from our own player safety point of view. Joe, is Robbie at 15? Is this something you think you're going to push on with now, like as to develop going I I think. You've, uh, you've got to have versatility across the back line. You've got to have um, you know, a number of different options. I even if you look at second row right now, we've already lost two, where we thought we actually had some real po really positive headaches. We're suddenly now saying, well, 
Uh, you know, a guy came off the bench, and, and I thought Quinn did really well, but he wasn't in, in our original squad. So we, we need to have guys with the flexibility. It was the same last uh, last World Cup. We we lost guys. We lost Jared Payne. So so we we end up playing Keith Earls in the midfield. Guys have to be able to move around. In the World Cup, you're a long way away. It's 31 players only. So, you know, we're going to keep trying to build our breadth as well as our depth because we have to commit to that um, knowing what's coming up in this calendar year. Yeah, I think we, we've talked a lot about the, the character of the squad and you know, that sort of character coming on the back of, of putting wins together. Well, look, I think we'll, we'll see a lot about them next week and um, you have no doubt that we'll respond. We'll, we'll have to just take this in the chin. You know, we were better by England in, in probably all facets of the game and, and we'll, we'll get some, some harsh feedback, some constructive feedback from the coaches and, and we will build into next week and, and we know that we're going to have to be better. We're going to have to be better physically and... and just right across the board, where it's going to be a tough test. Murrayfield is a really, really hard place to go and win, but it'll be a it'll be a huge test for us. But it'll be one that I think it's important that you, you spend this little bit of time reflecting on on what was a disappointing and uncharacteristic performance from us, and you got to digest that and you got to use that in the right way. I think that for us, it's, it's to make sure that, that we don't get, we just, that probably of symptomatic of the game, they brought that and we were just a split second behind. And I think if you're a split second behind at this level, you keep, you're keep keeping chasing and you're never ahead of the game, which is what we're good at. And that went right through the game. We just couldn't ever get, get back in front of them um, on the scoreboard and in the way we were setting up and the way we were going. Before, given the standard that you've been operating on the last while, Damaging a blow. Is this the confidence, or do you believe that the team can repair that confidence pretty quickly? That this might be a one-off blip. Or okay, I think when we've put together wins in a row, you know, we, we never got ahead of ourselves. We never thought that we're the finished article because we want to strive to be better. And and this is no different now. You know, this is a I suppose how we respond will determine whether it's a, a bump on the road or whether it's, it's something more than that. But like, I, I know with, with the group of players we have in here that they're, they're hurting in there, and, and as you would expect, but the first thing we'll do tomorrow evening when we get back together is, is we will look at, at how we can get better. And, and that is, I suppose, ultimately, that result now, we can't change it, but what we can change is how we react from it. Joe, it's a tough, tough point there, but was there a few players for you that kind of emerged with, with credit that they were happy with their performance? Yeah, again, I thought our scrum was good, our line-out was good, those, uh, those set pieces that we, that we need to be good, uh, they, were, they were very solid. Um, there's, I, I did think Robbie worked incredibly hard, um, Bundy got involved in a lot of play, Gary Ringrose, uh, you know, I thought a defining moment could have been his tackle, where we got that turnover ball and we didn't make the most of it on the other end, uh, we lost it. We got the uh, we got the ball back, but and and forced a penalty. But at that stage, if we could have scored, I think it could have made could have made the game 17 all. And for all the dominance physically that England had delivered, it put you back in the game. And that's how fickle it is. So yeah, there were there were some good performances. A couple of guys off the off the bench, um, as I said, Quinn. I thought Sean O'Brien came on and did well. Um, it's tough, Jordan Lama coming on in, in such a big game, and uh, you know he, he will learn from that uh, from that midfield scrum where they where they did get a, enough space on the edge to get that kick away, and uh, you know I, I think well, that's what we've got to keep doing. We've got to keep learning, and I think people forget the youth of some of these guys. You know, I know Jacob Stockdale was was player of the tournament last time, but he, he's still a very young man in terms of international rugby, and, and so is Jordan Lama. Um, so I, I think those guys are going to keep learning, and we've got to challenge them to, to keep getting better because you're coming up against world-class players. You know, Johnny May, he, he is experienced. He knows what he's doing. He's got great speed. So that's a huge challenge for a, a guy like Jordan Lama, and that's what you want. But more often than not, you want that challenge to come out with a positive result.
and um, that 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 will be a challenge to Jordan's confidence, to to all our confidence, that result tonight, um, because I guess you get used to having that winning feeling, and it's pretty hollow right now. Good last one, Joe. Sam, a reality check though about the physicality that will be required to have success at the World Cup. Yeah, that that is a reality check. That's that's how it's going to be, and that's that's why England are are such a Literally, they're a big team, and I thought they played really well tonight. Um, you know, it's hard to take anything away from from England. They uh, the, the intensity that they they brought to the game. You mentioned that line out right at the start, but it it, it was more a, a kind of simmering um, physical intensity that uh, that that they just collectively delivered, which made it. A fairly suffocating place to be out on that pitch tonight, I think. Okay, guys.